Nanocad Pro can create 3D models as solid entities and it works on the basis of sketches. Sketches is a fancy term that just refers to 2D entities, 2D objects like circles and rectangles. So we begin by drawing something like a circle. Go to the 3D Tools tab and choose 3D Extrude. That means it extrudes a 2D entity into a 3D one. So I click on it and up comes this dialog box. Now it looks like it has lots and lots of options but I'm going to ignore nearly all of them the first time around. Second time around, I'll show you what they all mean. You move your cursor over a 2D entity and when NanoCAD Pro identifies it as a likely candidate for being extruded, it's highlighted with this purple hatching. Click to select it and then you get a preview of what the extrude will look like. In this case, the height is 47, but you can enter in any number you want, such as 100 or 10. And immediately the preview updates. I'm going to put in 150 so we get a nice height and then click OK. There's your extruded solid. Let me sketch a rectangle to show some more features of the 3D extrude command. Click 3D extrude. This time NanoCAD Pro recognizes the rectangle and there's the 150 height. I'm going to show you what these buttons here mean. So that means it's going to extrude upwards in the positive Z direction. This means it extrudes downwards, and this button extrudes it in both directions, the total height being that 150, so 75 up, 75 down. The taper gives a slant to the side. I'll type in 10, and you can see how the sides are then tapered. To choose a point in the drawing, you click this button or this button to specify the height and the taper angle from existing features in the drawing. To show the other settings in the dialog box, I've drawn a circle. I'll start the 3D extrude command again. There's our familiar dialog box. I'm going to choose the circle and this button here is when you want to, the uh, future extrusion to affect an existing solid. So I'm going to click this button and then choose this solid. And then these three buttons become available. The first one joins or unions the two solids joining them together. The next one cuts the one solid out of the other, or subtract. And the third one intersects, leaves what's common between the two solids as the remaining solid. So I'm going to choose this uh, cut one and click OK. And now you can see that newly extruded 3D solid cut out that existing solid. The 3D Revolve command works in a similar manner and to prepare for it I've drawn this thin rectangle and then this line will be the axis about which I'm going to be revolving this sketch. So I'll come over here, click 3D Revolve and we have a somewhat similar dialog box. And it's a similar procedure as before. So I'm going to pass my cursor over the entity, highlight it in purple, select it. But the other thing Revolve ne needs to know is an axis. I'm going to click this button and if you come down here to the command bar you can see that you can select an entity such as a line as the axis about which the sketch will be revolved or else choose one of the three primary axes X, Y, and Z. Well I'm going to use this line and I find it's best to pick it using entity snaps so there's endpoint NanoCAD Pro is previewing what you have. The red line, of course, is the axis it's selected. And when you uh, come up here to extents, initially have the full revolution, so it goes a full 360 degrees, or you can do a partial revolution. So the default there is 90. You could change it to, say, 115. Preview updates immediately. These buttons are kind of like the extrude one. It tells the direction of the revolve revolution. Uh, this revolves it clockwise, uh, this button the opposite direction, counterclockwise, and this button in both directions, splitting the 115 degrees in half to go either way. And then this TG solid button is, works the same as with extrusions where you have existing solids that you want to work with, and then the booleans once again come into play. Click OK, and there's our parametric solid.
As you're developing your 3D model, you'll want some control over it, and that's where 3D history comes in. Click this button, and the 3D history panel shows up. And what it shows is the list of parts in the drawing. Our drawing has two parts, and you can see part number four, part number five. Ignore the number other than the fact that it, it's an identifier. If it's useful, you can rename it. So I'll call that one cylinder. Click the arrow next to each one to see what's inside of it. And you can see it's made of a planar sketch and the extrude. So we can click on that to see the sketch, click on that to see the extrude. Furthermore, we can suppress the extrude just to see the sketch or anything else that's underneath it. Right click and unsuppress. Right click and choose edit and up will come the command that was used to create it. So if you don't remember which command it was, that's a great way to do it. And then you can make your modifications because the solids in NanoCAD Pro are parametric. Similarly, this part here shows multiple features and that's because remember we used another solid to cut it out this part. So when we see the original circle that was used to create the extrude that was cut out, we can go here, click show, and there's that circle. And the extrude is here, and we can edit it and change it. So for example, let's change it to an intersect, click OK. And then the remainder is what is common between the extruded rectangle and the extruded circle. Again, we can show the original rectangle.